Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on here real quick. Uh, sometimes when you get a CNC, it's important if you're going to make a lot of jigs or fixtures or different things for it, that you have yourself a, a layout of your table, cutting parameters and your table situation if you've got um, T-track or T-slot or your spoil boards if you have a spoil board. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just show you real quick kind of what I've done for my Axiom. So essentially what I have here, the cutting parameter is 610 by 1210. Obviously, I converted that to inches, but I wrote that there for my own reference. All right, so this represents my actual cutting perimeter, the maximum amount that I can cut. So what I've done then is I made a grid two by twos starting at the bottom left, working out two inches by two inches all the way up, and I laid that grid out lightly on the table. Well, that's again more for reference for other things that I use the machine for. So this is my fence system that I made and essentially that is dead on that line and this this represents the bottom part of the table this represents the left side of the table and this right here represents the perfect placement of the center of that outermost border so this gives me a nice reference point for a variety of different things. Uh, this represents the, if I've got a board placed up against this fence and this part of the pin fence, this gives me the perfect placement here for my X and Y reference point for my datum point. So this is a good place for me to use to set up and dial in my uh, X, Y. Uh, but it's also a good place for me to do other things. But I've got that there. All of these are already drilled into my table. But I wanted to give you just a quick example here of what that looks like. So this is my, essentially, this is my table. And what we have, these are the T-slots and the aluminum surface that is my table. So clearly I have a lot of space behind my cutting parameter. and But I took a lot of time measuring everything out, getting everything exact. Um, not for anything in particular, but be, to be able to know that if I made a jig down the line, that I know that I could reference this here as a spot. And that would enable me to certainly be able to know exactly where each of these T-slots were represented. Now, but that doesn't do me much good if I don't know where the spoil board is. So what I also did was laid out exactly my spoil board location. And I happen to have strips. And as you can see, there are spaces nicely between each of those strips where I can access the T-slots. And that's real handy. Now, this is good information to know because I'm, I make a lot of jigs, a lot of fixtures. And having this is very important because it enables me to ensure that if I mark a hole or I need a hold down or anything like that, then I've got it. Now, when you join that in with the fence that I've made with the, using those pins, the pins go directly into this spoil board. And so I know now that if I reference a board on the left, right side of this side and the top side of that side, then I know exactly what my spacing could be for hold down hardware that would go into the T-slots. So I took the time and did this real elaborate and took, took a lot of effort to get this right. Um, and if you got a CNC, you'll, you'll quickly understand that sometimes this is the most accurate thing you can do. And now that I have this saved, Anytime I go to build a jig, I can open this file and I have access to all of this information real quick, real handy. And as I continue to expand on this, like if I decided I wanted to make a, a wooden fence, which was my original design, I've since removed that and replaced it with these pins. The beauty of the pins is as long as I have this reference point, this allows me still free movement between each of these slots to put different jigs, different fixtures, hardware, uh, hold downs, clamps, things like that. I don't have to worry about this solid fence like I did before. This gives me free range between there. Or if I know it's something that I'm going to be moving in and out, I can simply take these pins out and reference just here on the left side. Um, and then slide one pin in when I'm done and I have this as my main reference along the y-axis and one pin gives me my border 
for the the bottom of the the panel. So a nice little table setup. Very you know uh, probably you're thinking to yourself, man, this is way too much, and it is. But now when I go to build jigs, I have no problems. I, I just built uh, getting ready to build a sled, and I was able to bring this up and use this exactly the way I needed it to be done, and I knew exactly where each of the T slots were. Exact, exactly where each T slot that could be accessed was and where all my spoil boards are. So that just makes a world of difference to speed things up whenever you get ready to do your projects. Uh, so anyway, I just thought I'd give you a quick show and let you see kind of what I did and maybe something like that will help you with laying out your CNC. And this is for the Axiom AR8 Pro and so if you happen to have the same machine and you'd like this file uh, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. It was well worth my time. And just in case you're curious, I did make a jig that references the side of the table and references this side of the first spoil board. So as these, uh, because they are made of MDF, as these sort of get used, they will tend to want to slide on you. So you do have to constantly tension them down. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I made that jig for was so that I could butt the jig up uh, tight against here, tight against there, and I could pull this tight against my jig. And now that I know, it is dead, dead on referenced from this left side of the table. And I made a similar one from here to here. So whether it's these spoil boards or future spoil boards, I know that I can make them exactly the same distance from the left side and the bottom side and then I know that my spacing is going to be identical because I've got a spacer block as well that I use to stick in here. So do one, all of these spacing uh, spacings are going to be the same. So I know that this is identical, this is identical using my jig reference and everything else will fall in line. So anyway, a uh, quick showcase of that. Again, this is for the Axiom AR8 Pro. If this is something you're interested in, let me know. Uh, shoot me a message, and uh, if you got questions about what I've done here or why I've done something here, give me a holler, and we'll uh, see if we can help you out. All right. So this is what happens when you do take the time to lay it out. You can build jigs that are very proper and fit your table. So you can see I've got um, my hold down pieces that actually have fixed the jig there. You got it resting on part of my pin fence system here and got it resting against the pin fence system on the left side. So now I know this thing's going to be square. Not only that, but if I reference it from there, then I cut my fence, then I know that's going to be square. So now anything I lay up here, I know it's going to cut square and perpendicular on the machine. You can see I've got a series of uh, different cam clamps. I've got threaded holes here with different T-nuts in there for doing different fixtures and jigs. I've also got it where I can slide in my... Um, my cam clamp there boom that's locked in and not going to go anywhere once i get that done so you can do a series of different things but laying out your machine laying out your table helps to dial in when you make a jig so you make it right there you go